they were very influenced by Western country music. That's why a lot of Jamaican um, performers back in the days, they, days, they'd have names like Josie Wales and they would have cowboy hats on and they would be positioned like this on their album covers because they loved American uh, Westerns and shit like that. And we approached uh, Jamaicans had nothing to do with hip hop the way it is. I'm not hip hop according to most people, but I am the source of what hip hop became. They even said I was Jamaican. That's cool, her. My mother came from North Carolina. My father, to be truthful, they said he was born in Jersey, not to be disrespectful to anybody's nationality. I didn't know Herc was Jamaican for a good while. When you look at a lot of the early pioneers in hip hop, none of them heard any toasting records. They weren't playing toasting records or Jamaican records or reggae records at some of the earliest jams. Even Cool Herc himself has said he didn't play Caribbean records because the audience just didn't take to it. Jamaican toasting, no, we're not on the mic. I mean, if you're 14, 15 years old, what Jamaican artists are you listening to? You don't even know a Jamaican artist. We're all in high school, so we don't have that kind of information. So the roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. Having a good night tonight. How's everybody living this evening? Hold on, let me get my recording stuff together here. Hope y'all having a good night tonight, man. Hope you guys had a good week so far, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everybody's week has been productive and all that good stuff. Welcome everybody to the room. How y'all living, man? We're going to do the late night tap in as we always do. Everybody give the, the room a nice retweet. Let everybody know that we're in here live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let everybody know that we're in the building live. And I uh, hope you're going into a nice productive weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope if you're out here in L.A., you're going to be hitting up the microphone check screening starting tomorrow at the Landmark Sunset Theater. Tomorrow, Friday, the 12th. It's going to be microphone check popping off. I think the screening is at 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Saturday, there's two showings, one at 2, another one at 7. Sunday, I think the same thing. And continuous throughout the week. So everybody, if you are in LA, go to the Landmark Sunset Theater. I might be up there tomorrow. I know I'm traveling to Atlanta this weekend, so I'm getting ready for that. I got to hit up a whole bunch of different cities. Um, oh shit, I forgot. I got a, an interview in the morning too on Zoom with NBC somewhere on the East Coast. So I forgot about that. So I can't be on too, too late. But um, we're doing a lot of promotion. But I'll try to be up there tomorrow. I think I'm going to be up there tomorrow night. So y'all come join me at the Quad, not the Quad Theater, at the um, Landmark Sunset Theater. Now, next Friday in New York, the New York screening will start on the 19th. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be up there because I'm going to Atlanta. I got to do television stuff in Atlanta. Then I got to go to do some TV stuff in D.C. Then we got to do a bunch of stuff in New York. And I'll be at the screening at the Quad Theater in New York. And you guys can get your tickets now for that. And that one's going to be popping. And that one's going to be popping the whole week as well. But come through Friday and Saturday, definitely. We need to get them weekend numbers up. And um, it'll be great to be watching the film with a crowd, man. So go to microphonecheck.com, microphonecheck.com to get your tickets to watch the film. What's up, Brother Black Alpha? I see you, sir. I see you. But um, yeah, we're doing a lot of good press for the film and we're getting it popping and uh, people are very excited about it. What's up, Nikki the God? I see you, beloved. Um, I'm gonna get some calls in a second before I do, man. Did y'all see your boy Biden? Nigga, Biden, his mind is gone. Biden is so gone right now, man. Biden is gone, man. Biden was doing the speech. He was up here, um, cracker babbling like a mug. This dude was saying all types of stuff. He was like, yes, I got to talk to my, uh, 
chief executive, nigga, you the chief executive. Oh, oh, um, you know, Vice President Trump. I got Vice President Trump who's going to run with me. And I'm like, dude, he called Kamala Harris Vice President Trump. This dude is gone. He's gone. That dude of mine is fry. He was just saying all types of random stuff. He is so gone. You know, we're going to cut the deficit. And, and when I get back in office, I'm going to make bologna sandwiches half off for all the immigrants. And he's just saying anything. He's saying anything. This dude, you would be a damn fool to vote for this man. <laughs> Let's keep it a bean. Not that you like or dislike any other candidate, but damn, where the Biden, for real, are there any Biden supporters in here? Talk to me for real. Can you raise your hand? And I'm not going to beat up on you. I would love to hear your logic at this point. This man's mind is so gone. Do we have any Biden supporters in here now? Where's that Carlos dude? That old um, suspected Tether Carlos, who's always caping for the Democrats. Where he at? Where he at right now? I want to hear him spin this because a lot of the shills love trying to spin what's going on with Biden. Well, no, well, Biden, because he when Biden did the debate with Trump, they all they kept deflecting. Well, Trump was lying. Don't matter if Biden got dementia. Trump had told twenty five lies. <laughs> You can't blame Trump on this one now because he's up there. Biden is solo um, um, spazzing out. See? So you can't deflect onto Trump. You can't damn deflect. Please, some of y'all Democrats or Democratic shields, can you pop up in here and talk to me and give me some justifications why you rocking with your boy? Let's get Red Panda. You good? Hop in, Red Panda. What's up, Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you? Peace to the family. Yeah, I'm good. I had two quick things. Uh, when I look at Joe Biden, I don't know if you remember the movie from the 90s, uh, Dan Aykroyd, when he started uh, Nothing But Trouble. But every time I see him at this stage, he reminds me of Dan Aykroyd from uh, Nothing But Trouble. Everybody, go check that out. Just look at the screenshot, and you'll you'll kind of laugh at that. But real quick, uh, one, other, one other thing I wanted to go at. Um, it's kind of off topic, but uh, it is about um, about the microphone check and the, the, the long legacy or the misrepresentation that um, <clears throat> that uh, Cool Hurt was the uh, grandfather or the father of hip hop. I think that he's getting a big pass on this because I remember you stated a long time ago he doesn't do a lot of interviews, yeah. but I don't understand why he gets a pass. Why why the folks, the family not pushing up on pushing up on his bumper because it's kind of dishonest. They sits back and don't really clear it up or that the debate is going on and his name is amongst the the main people that's in the middle of this. So I feel like family we need to push up on his bumper a little bit and come on out and clear some of this stuff up. I don't am I playing with that. Thank you. So yeah, here's the thing with with Herc and I, you know I give Herc the respect, you know, he's supposed to get. Um Herc at first, I don't think he was saying that he was the creator. He would, Herc would be honest for the most part. Later on, he kind of started backpedaling and he kind of goes in, you know, back and forth with certain narratives. And again, he doesn't do too many interviews, so he leaves a lot of stuff out there. But, but Herc has done interviews and he's been honest about saying, hey, you know, we saw stuff that would be hip hop way before I started doing my stuff, his parties rather. He saw B-boys, he saw people playing breaks, and he got some of those breaks from other people. And he just played more of it. So the thing with Hurt, because he, he's admitted that hip hop was already bubbling in like 1970, 71, it was already bubbling. And the thing with Hurt, what he did, he primarily just played the b-boy breaks he just played the break beats whereas some of those other cats they might play a break beat and they went into something else his parties primarily focused on the kids who basically couldn't get into the disco clubs so that kind of set him apart so and you, you watch the movie microphone check we kind of you know we kind of paint the narrative and and bring clarity onto what was really going on in the 70s. That's why microphone check is very, very important. 
And it's very important for the family to help boost the legacy of our culture. Shout out to our brother, Lord Jamar. I've been seeing him do some phenomenal interviews. He was on the Art of Dialogue, breaking it down, talking about the real origin and how the Latinos, again, they came later. And that's okay. This whole thing, one of, one of these tethers, that um, what's this DJ name, this Colombian tether? He um, wrote me a whiny tweet talking about how divisive I am because we're not letting the damn Latinos steal credit. That's not divisive. We're not going to let you steal some credit for some shit you didn't do. That's just not going to happen. The truth is out there. What they want us to do, they want us to go along with the lie. We're not doing that. We're pushing back and we're pushing back hard. Family, this is very important because what happens, they've always done this to all of our genres. They take our genres and we sit up here trying to be on some kumbaya and we let them take it. And then what happens is we become guests in things that we create. And with this, we see it for what it is. And we're saying, no, we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let you guys rewrite no damn history right in front of our faces. And it's very important that they do it now. It's very important that they get this thing off now. That's why they're so butt hurt with microphone check, because this thing has checked their asses. And it's a hot film. It's number one already. Um, it's in theaters all over the country. Everybody's talking about it. So they can't run with that narrative. Every time they try to go with that narrative, everybody's shutting them down immediately. All on YouTube, wherever, all on TikTok, all on Instagram, all on Facebook. The minute they start running with that narrative that we got hip hop from the Caribbeans, Caribbeans and Jamaicans and, and Puerto Ricans and all that, it gets shut down. And cats who roll with that narrative, their reps are looking funny style. Look at Busta Rhymes. You know, Busta Rhymes ain't really running out here talking like that no more. He's People are kind of low-key letting them know that wasn't a business. Fat Joe, people are kind of hollering at him about that. Even with KRS-One, people are like pushing back on that. Uh oh Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. King Flea, what's happening, brother? You, you got your sound effects going. Hold on, what's happening, brother? My bad, Flea. Uh, what, what was that, brother? <laughs> yeah, I just was messing around with the soundboard, and I, I was trying to applaud what you were saying. My fault. There you go. Okay, I'm like, is this, this brother at a strip club or something? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Flex. <laughs> What's up? What's going on with you, King Flea? Hey, everything good, man. I, I, I spoke to you before. I asked, um, talked to you a couple of years ago. Um, I want to give a shout out to my brother, Terrell Wendell Richburg. He put me on to you. Yes. He passed away um, August 5th of 2022. I just want to give a shout out and get him on the, you know, on the board. But what I wanted to ask you is, um, are you going to do a definite, like in depth of that 2025 thing? Because a lot of people that I've been getting in contact with, you know, going on the back and forth, they keep bringing it up. And, and, and you know, it's kind of funny style. You know what I'm saying? So that, I'm, yeah, I'm in my plane I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay my plane there. But I'm just saying, like, you know, it's like they, they keep bringing up like the boogeyman. And it's like, come on now. Right, right. And I touched on it a few times. And it's a long document. It's like 900 pages. But it's a lot of boogeyman propaganda that the Democrats are using to, to scare us, man. It's another scare tactic. So, look, we've been living with Project 2025 for 400 damn years. That's all I got to say about it. These folks ain't got no new tricks they're going to wheel out on us. They done done everything to us. So it's time to just give us our paper. Let's get Khalif, Brother Khalif. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, Tariq? What's up, Peace, my love, new reparations, family. My New York <laughs> brother. What's happening yeah. with you, brother? Yeah, I was just listening to the brother talk about Herc. Um, I just wanted to reiterate on something um, real quick. Like, Herc even admitted that, you know, got, he was watching brothers like Smokey, P.T.J. Jones, and Grandmaster Flowers before he was doing his thing, you know, and Mario. Yes. I was at a Mario party with Van Bada, and we standing there in the crowd, and Herc is standing like maybe five, ten feet away from us, you know what I'm saying? Watching yeah. Mario also. So, you know, um, before Herc you know, started doing that party in um 73 and whatever it was, you know what I mean? He was going to other people's parties and watching what they was doing. Right. You know what I mean? He didn't he didn't start anything. You know what I mean? He emulated what he saw. And he said that in several interviews, like you said. And you 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 reiterated that in the movie Microphone Check. You know yep. what I mean? So yes, yeah, that's that's a that's a fact, you know. 
he doesn't do a lot of interviews, but he knows that he didn't get, he said that this was going on way before him. Yes. You know what I mean? He said that. He that he's made that statement. Yes. I'm gonna indeed. land my plane with that, but yeah, you know, he didn't start anything. My man, thank you so much, brother Khalif. Shout Peace. out to Khalif, my New York brother. And again, man, y'all need to come on out and see microphone check. Y'all need to come on out tomorrow in LA. Come on out. New York, the LA and New York tickets are already up. The tickets for New York, they're up. It's all on Fandango. We're on everywhere. We're everywhere. We're on Fandango. So family, go to microphonecheck.com. All my New Yorkers, join me next week. It's going to be a, a phenomenal event. That whole weekend, it's going to be popping. Um, the tickets for the other cities, um, for Atlanta, Chicago, D.C., Philly, they're going to go on sale Monday. And those screenings are going to be next Friday as well. They're going to start next Friday. So those tickets will go on sale Monday for all those other cities. So we want to see Atlanta in the building. Again, I'll be in Atlanta this weekend. Um, the Atlanta Journal, the, what's the Atlanta Journal Constitution, they're doing a story about me. That's going to run. I'm going to do some TV show out there in Atlanta. I know my, my PR firm, they got me doing a lot of TV stuff. So we're going to be in Atlanta. I'm going to be in Atlanta this weekend. All my Atlanta people hit me up. Let me know what's going on in Atlanta. Let me know what's popping. Let's get Brother Jody. How you doing there? What's up, Brother Jody? How are you? Man, I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, I'm just thinking about, uh, so you, I'm thinking about the reparations thing right now. I'm just saying to myself, I just feel like it ain't fair that the Africans can't get no reparations with us. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we, I feel like we all need reparations because they got as much, you know, trauma as much as we do too. You know what I'm saying? Because technically we were taken from them people from over in Africa. We were taken from there to America and, you know, the lineage, whatever. But I'm just saying, I feel like all of us need some reparations because it only makes sense. I don't think we should be sitting at the table saying, hey, you can't get this. You know, man, we need to all unify, come together. You know what I'm saying? It's about that time we all unify. And that, until that time come, man, I don't know what, you know, what we're going to do. But so how I just feel like Slow down, Jody. Now, how is that going to work? How are African immigrants, how would it be justified for them to get reparations? Because, man, how, what is going to look like we get reparations, they don't get nothing? What is that going to look like? It's going to look like we're getting a debt that's paid that's owed to us. They didn't have, they don't have a debt that's owed to them by the U.S. government. Right? Well, you hung up. Jody, what happened? <laughs> I didn't hang up on him. <laughs> Jody, what happened? His horse crap ran out. He, I think he realized what he was saying was horse crap. <laughs> no, come on now. You know good and well that ain't going to work. No, they they they're not owed a debt, you know. And Jody, are you a low key tether? Because you know a lot of these low key tethers be saying stuff like that. All right, Jody, all right, come on. You know good and well that's not gonna work. Yeah. So this dude, he might be an undercover. You got to watch folks who say stuff like that. They be undercover, they're undercover tethers. Lee Roots. What's going on? Good evening, Flex. I'm good, man. How are you, brother? Doing fantastic, brother. Uh, a wonderful pleasure to step in the room and say hello. Uh, I'm from Sacramento, brother. Uh, I've been following you for a while. And um, I even tell my family on the Sunday uh, about this stuff, man. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, I do handyman business here in the Sacramento area. And uh, during the Trump years, um, I want to let some of the black folks know, especially some of the brothers that are very handy. Get your tools together, brothers. Um, they're going to really start shipping some of these uh, jobs back to us like it was during during Trump because they didn't. A lot of my customers kind of refused to kind of hire some people that spoke Spanish a lot, you know, different things like that. So they turned the jobs over to us a lot. And um, we have a great opportunity uh, to kind of capitalize on the next presidential run like this. Yep. Um, and I was, I'm going to tell you, but I was so busy, man, uh, during that Trump year. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. My voice is waving a little bit, but um, yeah, man, yep. Hey, 
sisters too. Uh, get your house clean and stuff together. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Let me land you playing because you got all types of raindrops in the background. But the brother's making a good point. Um, a lot of people, um, for a lot of you know serious things that they want to get built, you know, a lot of them don't want to go for the undocumented migrants. A lot of people, you know, they're kind of moving away from that because, truth be told, a lot of the undocumented migrants. When it comes to building stuff, that there's this myth that they can get a lot of stuff built. Not really. I don't know your experiences, but you know, building a lot of stuff, eh, not as thorough as people try to make it out to be. No, no disrespect. You know, you get some of these brothers out here. They know what they. You know, some of these brothers who are handymen and brothers, they 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 can put things together. Because I've I, I done gone to, you know, I wanted a little furniture put together here and there. Dude, I done went to some of the Home Depot cats. You all know what I'm talking about. And, they, man, they put stuff together so janky, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. Some of that stuff was put together janky as hell to keep it a bean. So it ain't, oh, it ain't cracked up like you think it is. Get you one of these brothers out here who's thorough and have them put it together. <clears throat> Malcolm. What's up, Malcolm? Then we'll get the other guy. Malcolm? Tyreek, I was next. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, yes. It's sexy men. <laughs> I'm not What's... here to troll you today. I want to have a serious conversation. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so, where are you from? I think I, sh I should By introduce way, myself. Okay, go My ahead. name is Jasmine. Wait. Obviously, I'm a black trans woman. I'm African American, Black American, American descendant of slavery, but I really don't claim FBA. I don't care about Africa. I don't care about the Caribbeans. But I wanted to talk about hip hop. Now, obviously, I do believe that Black Americans did invent hip hop. But when it comes to like female hip hop, you had people like Little Kim, who was the first to win like five mics, and you also have Nicki Minaj, who was considered like the current queen of hip hop, and they are both Caribbean. And you also had people like Cardi B, who wasn't even Black. And she's dominating hip hop kinda in the female genre, but you have people like Megan Thee Stallion who is African. I mean, that slow down, slow down, slow down. Let's back it up. Now, I've I've heard mixed things about Lil Kim. Some people said she is Caribbean. Some people say her family is from North Carolina. So what's oh, the deal is. with? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I've heard a lot of Caribbean say she was Caribbean, but I'm pretty sure Megan Thee Stallion she is what you would consider FBA. But I know yeah. a lot of black people don't support her that much because of, she rightfully snitched on that black man who shot her. But I think he was also Caribbean. So my thing no. is, like, say 100 now, years from now, in the future, they can say, well, such and such was in your um, community and they dominated your, um, dominated your, um, what is it called, genre? They dominated um, hip hop. So they could be considered, um, I don't know how to say it. Basically, they do have a claim to hip hop. No, they don't. They just—they're hot artists at the time. They're just hot artists right now. But they're my thing really is, why? Why do you continue to prop them up instead of propping somebody like Megan Thee Stallion up? Who prop who up? Who do I prop? Like up? Cardi or B, who? Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, all these people that are Caribbean. I don't even know what Cardi B is. And when you say who, who? You saying why do you prop them up? Do you mean me? Because I don't yeah, like, know. Like black oh, people, black Americans, oh, black Americans. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. You mean black people? Okay. Yeah. Well, you, we, I guess black people like a hot songs. Some of them have hot songs. There's like Biggie was Caribbean, but he had hot songs. So that's the thing. You got a lot of people. We welcome in. We welcome them into the culture. If you can spit, and that's your problem. If you're gonna delineate, as you say, you have to be exclusive and just cut them all out. Well, we're delineating as far as claiming our lineage because that's a definite. We come from a specific lineage that other people don't but come from. But you can't claim it if you still allow them to come into your culture. Yeah, well, you can. You can. Just like um, if I go open up a Jamaican restaurant, I'm not Jamaican, but if I want to, I can open up a Jamaican restaurant and have it popping, you know? And just as long as we understand. But that's the difference, the Tyreek. They would not allow that. No, you know, they couldn't stop me. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to open up a Jamaican restaurant in South Central LA, I could, but it would still be, I have to acknowledge that I got this from Jamaicans. It's a Jamaican restaurant. 
so people can participate in our culture, just so they know it's foundational Black American culture. That's what we want people to recognize. You understand? But didn't, didn't Michael B. Jordan try to sell something, and they told him he was a Caribbean, so he couldn't do right. it? Like, they right. wouldn't allow you to do that. Right. Um, I don't know why they, he let them punk him out. I don't know why he let them do that. I wish he had not have done that. If I was him, I still would have did it. I still would have put the damn thing out. Um, but again, he's um, he's in the Hollywood system, and I don't think he wanted to create a negative stigma that would follow him into the studios. So if he was to do a movie, some tethers be outside the movie mad and throwing some some bammy at his ass or something. So I, I think he was on that. He just said, hey, let me just back out and do something else. But yeah, just as long as people acknowledge our culture, that's what it is. Who's your favorite female rapper, by the way? Um, I'm not really a rap fan. I like R&B. But I was just going to say, I think y'all should probably make an Estelle up more. Do what with Megan The Stallion? I think y'all should prop her up more because I she I think she is what you would consider FBA. Yeah, she is. I like Megan The Stallion, and Megan is fine. She's been touring, and her tours are doing good. She's on the road with Glorilla, so yeah, I think people are giving her the the props and credit she deserves. All right, all right. Okay, I, I think something. I think it's KY Jelly fell on the phone and it muted it. I didn't mute you, sir. Don't start with the jokes, Tyree. Okay, all right, brother. All right, let me let you go ahead and um, call. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like the shoes when you took the um picture with Vlad. The shoes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Tef- oh, yeah, yeah. I just had on my comfortable you shoes. You look very spiffy, Grandpa Tyree. There you go. There you go. And <laughs> I had to get one joke. There you go. All right, well, you get Grandpa to, to pay that bussy bill. All right, thank you so much. Oh yeah, people want to talk crap about my my shoes I had on. I I took a picture when um I did Vlad. We I did the interview with Vlad the other day, and I wasn't planning on having my lower body filmed. <laughs> and I do interviews all the time, usually um, sitting down. Even when I go on Fox News or whatever, I'm I wear some Crocs because I know my my bottom part ain't being filmed. <laughs> so uh, when I did Vlad, I just literally. I was about to go get my go to my shoe closet. I said, "Hell no, I ain't, they ain't about to film my feet." So I just grabbed some bullshit ass shoes that was sitting by the door. I just grabbed some shoes and put them on, and we did the interview. And then after we did the interview, we took a picture, and in the picture you can see the shoes. So now some of the tethers are talking crap about my little um, janky shoes I had on. So yeah, that's what it is. All right, but yeah, the shoes are not being filmed. And again, I throw on janky shoes or whatever when I'm doing sit-down interviews where I'm not being seen. Hell, even when I'm doing my lives, you know, I have on house shoes. Y'all can't see what I'm wearing. So, right, so the tethers are trying to, you know, they I, I guess they're trying to roast. But nigga, those shoes are still better than y'all little ashy sandals that you used to flee in. All right. So, so yeah, let's not go there. Let's get Malcolm. Malcolm in the building. What's up, Malcolm? Malcolm, you good? Yo, what's going on, bro? What's up, brother? How are you, sir? I'm cool. I'm cool. Listen, real quick. Um, I'm not political or nothing like that. I be listening to basically more Trump side because I can feel Joe Biden kind of like forced on us. But listen, yeah. here's my question. What kind of defense do you have for the talking point of Trump being divisive? You see what I'm saying? When, now, when they say divisive, divisive as far as what? Like um, dividing the nation. But again, when they say that, you you get them to be very specific about what they're saying, what they mean. You may, whenever somebody says that, make them explain what they mean. You see, when they say he's dividing the nation, dividing the nation, how? Yeah, yeah, type shit. Right. All right, bro. I ain't gonna take up too much of your time. Man. Thank you so much. Again, you you start. You we got to make people own up to what they're saying. Don't don't give them the answer. Just like Neely Fuller says. If somebody's saying something, you let them define it. So when you say Trump is divisive, okay, he's divisive as far as what? Well, as far as race. Oh, really? 
All right, let's open that Pandora's box. How was he different from damn Biden? That's the answer. Dude, how is Trump different from Biden or the Biden administration? They're in office now. They're divisive. These people don't help us with no justice when it comes to black people. These people allow anti-black racism to fester. and These people don't do a damn thing to protect us. What's the difference? Most of the, the unjust police shootings of black people, these are done in Democratic-run cities. Y'all know that? Yeah, that's the answer. Remember, when Mike Brown and all of that, that happened in a Democratic city under a Democratic president, under a Democratic DOJ. Tamir Rice, Democrat. Trayvon Martin, Democrats. The Democrats were running the show when these high-profile lynchings started happening. You understand? Sandra Bland, Democrats. Um, Eric Garner, Democrats. Come on, man. And the Democrats did not produce any justice for these things. Nothing. Let's get science, Scientol. Scientologist, right? What's your name, brother? Hey, man, I, I'm no Scientologist, bro, but uh, yeah, I just want to talk about Louis Farrakhan, man. What do you think about this dude? You know he's a Scientologist, and he be roping these, these dudes into Scientology. <clears throat> yeah, the Nation of Islam, man, they all Scientologists, bro. No, they're not. They they're are, not. bro. Look into it. Look, I promise you I know because I was there. His brother was there. His name Brother Joshua. He a, he a Scientologist, bro. Louis Farrakhan, a Scientologist. They're all into Dianetics and all this shit. It's a mind control cult, man. Scientology is some nasty shit, bro. And what they play? Can you watch your language? All yeah, right? bro. Yeah, yeah, man. Watch I'm just saying. They're, they're Scientology. What, Are you what, you're not a Scientologist, bro, right? What's with this weird accent, this fake accent that you're doing? What's that about? What you talking about, man? Is that supposed to be a black scent you're doing, sir? Bro, I'm just talking. I'm just talking about uh, Louis Farrakhan, bro. Clearly, a white man putting on a very. Uh, what you talk? How? What, how could you say that, man? How, how you say that, man? I, I can tell, sir. You've been practicing your black scent. No, nah, man, you full of shit, bro. Watch your mouth, white man. All right, why are you sitting here practicing your black scent? I'm asking you about Louis Farrakhan, bro. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, do you feel? that Kyle Rittenhouse should have went to jail or do you think he was justified in his actions? Man, I don't know who that is, bro, but I'm just saying Louis Farrakhan, bro. He yeah. is a Scientologist. You telling right. me he's not? You telling right. me he's not? You telling right. me he's not, right? You saying he's not? Okay. Oh, well, no, the white coming right on out now. Oh, the white oh, is we're coming right on out, man. You tell, you tell, what, what is, what are you talking about, bro? I'm, the asking, you, out. I'm asking you, bro, slow, about. Slow down, slow down. So let me, so, sir, um, <laughs> do you feel that um, Ashley Babbitt was justified? They were justified offing Ashley Babbitt. Do you feel Bro, that? Bro, you talking to all these people? I don't know who you're talking about, man. I'm yeah. just talking about Louis Farrakhan. You know who Louis Farrakhan <laughs> is or, or not, bro? So, so you disagree with Louis Farrakhan? No, I disagree with Louis Farrakhan being a Scientologist. So do you agree with him on other things? I agree with him on some things, but he shouldn't what, be pulling like, people. Man. Like, what? Right, listen, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into Nation of Islam, bro. That's it. I'm just saying Nation of Islam and Scientology. What do you agree with him on? I agree with a lot of things he said, man. But he like he, what? Like what? Just I'm thing. just asking you, mate. You say he's not a Scientologist, bro. I'm telling what? you, he oh, is. He is, though. You ran out of your trolling points. I'm just asking now. Bro, listen, man. The and only I'm, I'm, I, listen, I, I'm only here for one reason, man. It's just, God, boy, these white supremacists are boring. Lord. He didn't think I was going to catch that fake black scent he was doing. Listen, white supremacists, we don't talk like that. I, what they do, they sit up and I think they listen to rappers and they study rappers. And I think he's trying to take on the voice inflection of a mushmouth rapper. But I can tell, look, I lived in the South. 
and I know a genuine Southern accent, and that wasn't it. All right. You know, he was he was really over the top, and yeah, yeah. You need to work on it a little bit more, sir. I can tell that you were a white supremacist. Yeah, we don't talk like that, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No. All right? No. <laughs> Stop. Hi, I'm Mateo. Do you want to learn about Hidden Heroes? Hidden Heroes from A to Z is a cool book that tells the stories of amazing black heroes you might not know about. You'll meet inventors, you'll meet explorers, and leaders who change the world. It's fun, inspiring, and you can learn so much. Get your copy now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Let's discover our hidden heroes together.